Welcome to Marriage Minutes. And uh, today we are going to be talking about for better or for worse. Is that right? That is correct. <laughs> for better or for worse. Listen, when you got married, I'm not sure what your vows were, but the bottom line is this. You have some kind of formulation of your vows that talked about deciding to stay with your spouse for better or for worse. So that meant that you planned to stick with them through the good and through the bad. And I know that it's easier to stick with your spouse during the good, but guess what? When you are able to stick through the bad, that makes the better that much greater. Yes, it does. <laughs> that wasn't good? Yeah, that was very good. It means like you graduated to another level. You, boom, stepped it up. And so uh, the Bible says that there will be trials and tribulations. Uh, and it's just a matter of you overcoming that. Uh, and it means that when those times come, when those worst times come, uh, when those poor times come, how do you handle it as a team to get through it? Adversity only shows your strength. Most of the time we think it shows a weakness and we, we run from it, but adversity and how you handle adversity and how you communicate through adversity uh, will allow your marriage to be stronger and it will strengthen the relationship and what was once uh, the love of your life will become your ride or die. You know, it will become the person that you're more than happy to be uh, in the trench with doing life together. Uh, life is throwing curveballs and fastballs every day. And so it's important that you maintain the strength of the relationship, that you stay uh, one flesh, that you stay together, and that you deal with the for better or for worse. Uh, there will be sickness that comes. There will be death that comes. Uh, there will be uh, job promotions, and there will be children, and there will be so many great things. But the thing of it is, is you have to stay one flesh. I think that as much as we don't want to go through the hard times in our relationships, I think that that's what makes us who we are. I, when I look back and think about the hardest times that Mark and I have gone through in our relationship, from infertility to emotional infidelity to financial hardships, when I look back on those things, I know now that they were steps platforms, if you will, that helped us get to where we are today, to be able to even have the confidence, the courage, and the vulnerability to sit in front of you and to speak about certain topics. It's only because we went through those things. And I know that it is only because of God's grace that we got through those things, because we know many people that went through similar, similar situations and did not make it. So we're not taking that for granted. We're not saying that we are better than anybody because of that. But we know that when we got married, we decided that divorce wasn't an option. And we knew that with the bad, that with the good, I'm sorry, there was going to come some bad. And we've made it through. And we made it through and we're continuing to make it through and continuing to strive and to get through. And you can too, but you have to make a proclamation that we are going to stay in this together for better or for worse. When the kids grow up and leave, we are still here. When the financial hardships come, we're still going to do it together. When an uh, 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 in-law or a parent dies, we're still in this together. When we experience job loss, we're still in this together. The Bible talks about a three core strand is not easily broken. It's so much easier to go through something with somebody and with God, that being that third part of that strand, so much easier than to go through it apart. So much easier. And I would not want to have dealt with the things that I've had to deal with on a personal level without the support of my spouse. So I'm in this. Marriage is not hard work. It's necessary work. And it is not something that is for the lighthearted. <laughs> if you if you a punk, stay single. But if you are willing to make a decision and choice that for better or for worse, I'm going to do this, then it's a wonderful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And the amazing thing is that if you look in the Bible, every time in the Old Testament, every time that God blessed Jacob or Isaac, they were always willing to build an altar. 
And sometimes we forget about what God has brought us through. We haven't built any altars, so to speak, you know, and as Rhonda was sitting there speaking, I just kind of thought about all the stuff that we've been through, you know, and yeah, it was tough going through, but it made me better. So like when we were broke and we didn't know how we were going to get through, we got through. So the next time we were broke, I wasn't in dismay. I was like, okay, we got through this before. We know how to handle this adversity. Let's get through it, you know? And so it just makes you better. And so that's the important aspect. And so build your altars. Remember where God has brought you from. Remember what God has blessed you with. Remember the for better or the for, wor for worse or the richer and the poor. Remember all those things. Look at all those altars and then just say, God, I know you're here with us. And I know you have never left us nor forsaken us. Come and on. so we're going to get through this. I don't know how we're going to get through this. Like when my father died four years ago, you know, I thought, you know, not being able to have a child, I thought the emotional infidelity, I thought all that was hard. And as I look back at that particular altar that I never really built and concerning my father, I don't know how I got through it, but God and my wife. And even that was so personal, but she just knew that I was struggling and I would sometimes disclose to her, yeah, I'm, I'm having a, bar, a hard day but I got through, you know? And so now my heart is so open when I hear people lose their parents because I, I've experienced that. And so now I can talk to that. I can help be that stand in the gap that God wants me to be because I experienced that. So whatever your experiences, whatever your altars are, they're there for you to remember, but they're also there for you to give a testimony for those who are coming behind you who need to hear those words of encouragement. And that's in Revelation. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony. And so your for better, for worse is to make you stronger, but it's also to strengthen your family, your community, so that they can be better. That's good, baby. You said it, you said it all. No test, no testimony. Don't be bitter, get better, or for worse. Better or for worse. I think that's was it. Did I say something? Yeah, that was good. You said it was good. Be well and be blessed. Better and for Deuces. Better.